Awesome. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining us for another PPA Road to Imaging USA live video cast. Uh, this is where you get to learn more about Imaging USA and our wonderful speakers. And today's guest speaker has been a successful commercial food photographer for over 30 years, has been educating for 20 years, and is blogging on foodphotographyblog.com for the past 12 years. Um, some of her commercial clients include Chipotle, McDonald's, Burger King, Marriott Hotels, uh, Tea Leaf, uh, Nestle, and the list goes on and on. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to introduce you to the very talented Miss Christina Peters. Uh, Christina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jamel. It's so good to be here and chatting with you guys about imaging. I'm so excited. So and yes. it's coming up fast, dude. <laughs> it is. You know, we got <laughs> Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and imaging in that order. I know it. It's freaking me out. I'm not. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's for <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. But we will we'll be ready. We prepare all year for this moment. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're going to be in, a, in for a treat when they get to your session. You know, they're going to be in for a treat. I'm excited. I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Awesome. So for those who don't know you, Christina, um, do you mind sharing a little background about how you get how you got started with photography and how you chose to go in a direction professionally for commercial food photography? Sure. So um, I actually started taking photos when I was little. My father had a camera. This was in days of film. And so um, he let me use his Minolta camera, which I still have that camera, actually. Um, and I was always fascinated with how horrible my images looked. <laughs> so dad was trying to teach me, he was a chemist. So um, eventually I ended up having a dark room um, in the home and um, was doing photography all through junior high, high school. And when it came time to sort of figure out what I wanted to do for a living, wasn't really sure, but I've been doing this photography thing forever in my mind, like I was 16, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, I think I want to be a photographer. And my parents freaked out and they were like, no, that was supposed to be a hobby. Like, now it's <laughs> like, um, it's, I've been doing this every day since I was like eight. So I want this to be my profession. And so they kind of weren't on board with the program. Uh, so I ended up uh, moving out at a very young age, and I went to a two-year college to get my first photography degree, and then I transferred to Art Center College of Design. And that's when my parents were kind of like, okay, I guess she's serious, <laughs> you know? Like, she's still taking a lot of photos. And so um, Art Center was great. It, prepa it prepared me uh, technically for a lot of things. Didn't really teach me a lot about the business back then. So right at Art Center, I started assisting as many photographers as I could, and I gave myself two years. So instead of getting a master's degree, I sort of got my own master's degree in my mind, and I assisted a bunch of photographers who did many different disciplines. And um, at that point, I thought I wanted to do product photography. So I was working with car shooters, fashion shooters, jewelry, um, electronics, like just name any product. I've probably shot dishware, bedding, sheets, like you name it. I assisted all these different jobs. And one of the photographers I worked for was a food shooter. And I really started gravitating towards his working for him versus the other product stuff. It really just clicked for me. And um, I really enjoyed the process and treating food as as art really and building it on the plate and things like that and working with a food stylist and a prop stylist to come together with this beautiful food image that you know individually wouldn't have happened without this this team effort so so mm. that's kind of how i ended up into it was that's from awesome. assisting really yeah yeah that's all it's good to have like a mentorship in photography and kind so of experiment much. you know yes Yes. Yeah, that'll help guide you to the path that you want to go. And, 
you know, what you like and don't like in photography. So that's, that's great. That you have. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's important. If you don't know what you want to shoot, it's really hard starting out if you want to shoot everything. So I always recommend find local photographers in your area whose work you admire and just see if you might be interested in doing that. I had no idea assisting the food shooters that I assisted that I would end up that being my discipline. You know, I had no idea. You just never know. So that, that's the fun part with assisting. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And now you're teaching it. And this will yes. be your, yeah. And this will be your, your third imaging that you've attended. Yes. Um, that's right. Once as an so I'm kind of a newbie in, in the PPA world. I'm kind of a newbie. <laughs> yeah, I would say you know? a little bit a better. I would say intermediate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you educated twice and you have some fantastic webinars with education with PPA too. So that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your, your first yeah. time at imaging, you were an attendee. That's right. That's right. I went to the first imaging first imaging after COVID. So, you know, it was one of those things where we weren't really sure, was it really going to go on? Was it not going to go on? You know, it was like, I can't imagine what you guys went through. It was a very, I'm sure, stressful time for y'all down there. But um, this is when it was in DC. And so I got to experience the imaging there. And it's amazing. If anyone hasn't been to imaging yet, <laughs> you are in for a treat. I really hope you go. You guys really know how to do this properly. Cause you know, you've been doing imaging for a couple years now, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Like, how many years, how many years has imaging been going on for? It's amazing. You guys got it yeah. down. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, PPA has been here for over 150 years by itself. I know it. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And we have a great community of photographers who, who want to give back, who want to educate, who, yeah. who want to keep the industry uplifted. So um, yeah. it's great to have that support from you guys. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a really, really great organization. I've, I've been very, very impressed. I I was a newer member because uh, meaning I haven't been a member for that that long because I do shoot food. And, you know, rumor on the street was kind of like it's for portrait shooters. But really, there there are a lot of people in PPA who do want to work and do commercial photography. And there are a lot of commercial shooters in the program. So um, once I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, okay, cool. I'm going to check this out. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And now your second time there, you are a speaker. So tell me about that transition going from an attendee and now you're prepared to give back at PPA. What was your experience like the first time you were a speaker at Imaging USA? Well, last year's show was amazing. Um, there were so many people there. It was exciting to be, I, I felt like, uh, it, like in the industry for conferences, like we were, we were back to, I would think almost normal, right? There were so many people there. Um, everyone was so excited just to be back in person with each other and to be able to have those connections that it's really hard to get online with any type of conference. Right. So, um, I got to connect with, uh, friends of mine who are, I have a membership site and I, some of my club members were there and we've, you know, we see each other on zoom every month, but seeing them in person after five or six years, it was amazing. And really, you know, came out of that having a lot of awesome new friendships that developed and um, really, really close with these people. And, um, and teaching there was really amazing. Um, I was talking about doing a bid for commercial photography and working, you know, doing um, food photography and things like that. And I just had um, so much love and respect was from the audience was it awesome. And after I was done my, um, my talk, I had easily about 50 people who had so many questions um, about <laughs> what I was talking about and commercial bidding and, you know, the estimate and things like that. So um, it, it's really exciting because I've been talking to, um, you know, you guys about doing more commercial programs for uh, the PPA. So 
I think um, people are really wanting to learn more about working with a commercial client so they can add more to their roster. So you're not just relying on one type of photography income. You know, I, I think it's really to your advantage to learn a few different disciplines in photography because you're going to get asked to do different stuff no matter what type of photography you end up doing. Um, you know, so we could talk a little more about that, but. Yeah. Oh, so my first experience at imaging was amazing. And I got to say, when I walked into the main area where it was kind of like a runway up to the conference rooms, my jaw just dropped. It was stunning. <laughs> it was amazing. And so many people were there. I was just like in awe. I mean, it, you guys really know how to do it right. <laughs> I got to say. Well, thank you. Very, and you contribute awesome. to that as well. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, the Gaylord Opryland last year was a it was a, a massive space. It was huge. So wow, dude, and, it's like a city. It's a city. <laughs> yes, you never have to leave the the hotel at all. Everything is there for you. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. and it was great for us as staff mm -hmm. to see a lot of people who have attended in the past or had those relationships, like you said. Yeah, yeah. So after COVID, now I get the chance to see. I get a chance to hug. Get out and exactly. about. For the excitement was there. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it worked out great. And yeah. what an amazing, beautiful space. And the rooms were huge. The rooms, everything just looked great. Yeah. I'm sure on the back end, you guys were like, you know, hustling and working it, but it it flowed so smoothly. It looked, it was great. Yeah. For us, was, pizza really? cake. We don't worry. Pizza cake. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> All of our staff work very hard. We're working hard oh. right now. To make a good event so yes absolutely absolutely yeah <laughs> so we, we and now with food photography i know my first introduction i know i've shared this before but my first introduction for food photography was me taking a picture of a good meal out with my wife from my phone looking on and putting on instagram and getting a couple likes and i was like oh that's great <laughs> but then i saw how you actually create with food and you know it's not just about that dish you know, in your work, I see that it's a story behind these creations, you know, from the color science to the props that you use, mm -hmm. um, a, a addition to the food and who you're shooting for, you know, yeah. it's, why is it so important for these photographers to really understand what it's, it's important to be skilled in food photography? Where's the true value at in that? So what I would say to answer that first would be if you have food photography in like your arsenal, it really opens up a huge world of potential commercial clients, not just restaurants. Restaurants is a small little sort of quadrant in the types of clients that actually need food photography. So in, in the workshop I'm going to be running for you guys, the first part of the workshop, we're going to be breaking down all the different types of clients that can use food photography, because there's going to be some that you never really thought of, um, and they might even be in your area. And so sort of break down the types of commercial clients you can have, and when is it appropriate for you to approach them in your photography career, right? So for example, if we have some um, seasoned shooters um, they might understand production and larger jobs. They could actually go for some a bigger client versus if you're just starting out and uh, you've only been shooting for a few years, then a smaller client, like a very small brand or um, a smaller restaurant might be more appropriate. So I'm going to break all of that down. Um, one thing that has always fascinated me in our photography world, and I was thinking about this this morning um, when we were preparing for our talk today, um, I kind of look at our photo world in, in the commercial world in it's sort of like two different types of clients. You've got the type of clients who hire photographers regularly. And I'm talking about ad agencies, design firms, and um, sort of the larger companies that what they do all day, every day is put together and, you know, they, they build photo shoots, they produce jobs and they hire photographers regularly. So that's like one sector in the commercial photography world. Then you've got the smaller companies, the smaller brands 
that are not working with an agency and you're working client direct with them. And these, these people are less familiar with our world and how it works. And in my experience, when I'm working with a smaller company and I work with brands of all sizes, not just the big ad agencies, but I do find with the smaller companies, they make an assumption. Well, you're a photographer. You can shoot any, anything. You're a photographer. You're calling yourself a photographer, right? Even though you might be branding yourself as a wedding shooter, a uh, family shooter, you know, you might be branding your website. Like you don't have any food photos on there. Chances are, if you end up doing, let's say a family portrait session for someone who owns a restaurant and they are really happy with working with you, they might ask you to come in and shoot for their restaurant. Even though you're not showing that portfolio on your website, they don't understand that this might not be in your wheelhouse. So um, with this workshop, we're going to uh, basically do, we're going to talk about the business side of being a food photographer. And then um, we're going to, I'm actually going to do a demo and I'm going to show you sort of pretend like we're photographing a burger for a restaurant, something like that. So, um, so well, this way, spoiler way, alert. yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very fun. So um, this way, when you do get approached or somebody asks you to do something food related, um, you're going to remember this workshop and you'll be like, oh yeah, I, and you might think, whereas before you might've turned the job down because you just didn't know if you could pull that off. I'm going to give you some awesome tools and resources to um, help you figure that out. So um, I remember when the pandemic hit, um, my membership site was flooded with portrait photographers and they were scrambling because they've only been doing portraiture. They were interested in food, but it was kind of on the to-do list to sort of learn and figure out. And now here we, here we were where they weren't allowed to take portraits. You know, all of us were shut down for a little while, but um, for food shooters, you know, we still had clients. So, um, so it's just like, I think an ex awesome extra thing to have, um, in your photography discipline arsenal, if you will. <laughs> yeah, completely agree. Yeah. 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 Cause it's very similar, right? It's like, instead of posing a person, you know, you're pretty much posing your props, your, your food yeah. lighting still is equally important. Exactly. Um, you know, and now you have the yeah. the time. You, now you can take your time with the product versus you know having to worry about a human being getting hungry. Right. Just, just yourself. <laughs> exactly. And guess what? Food does not talk back. That's right. Yeah. And you can eat it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat it in the end. Although <laughs> half the food I end up photographing because we've all manhandled it, you kind of don't want to. But. Um, <laughs> yes. you are shooting for a restaurant and that chef knows how to plate, um, then yeah, you can have some really fun things to eat when you're done your shoot. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because plating is important too. You know, I know mm -hmm. some food photographers who aren't skilled at food design or, or plating mm -hmm. and just having that as a skill set or someone on staff to do that actually brings your value up even more. I right. would assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I have never, ever called myself a food stylist. Um, when I am shooting for restaurants who don't want to hire a stylist, I am assisting the chef. Um, if I am working for a client whose chef does not know how to plate, then I will suggest we get a food stylist. It's one of those things where, you know, it's like, imagine if you were doing um, portraits and you were doing the hair and makeup. There's no time for that, right? You need a hair and makeup artist to work on your client so that you can set up the lighting and you can do your job. So um, that's kind of how I break it down. Same thing with prop styling. Um, when you're working with something, someone like a restaurant, you typically have less props to worry about. You're going to be using usually their their dishes their their plateware their silverware and their um their glasses and things like that because it needs to look like it was in their environment but as soon as you're dealing with a food brand then that's where propping comes in and stuff like that so yeah i i always have a team when i'm shooting um 
unless it's for a, a restaurant that has an amazing chef that knows how to plate. And then, it, then it's like dr a dream. They're just creating these beautiful dishes and I just can't wait to get my light on it and shoot it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, you know, portrait photographers definitely need to keep this as a skill set yeah. in, in their business. If they want to continue to grow and as things change, like you said, you know, COVID, you guys are busy. You yeah. Know? And, um, and it's yeah. a good busy. Right. There's a, a lot of restaurants, they, no matter what their original concept was, they all had to change it for takeout. And a lot of the restaurants didn't have imagery to support that. And so, um, so that was an opportunity for photographers. That's what I was teaching in my program. Um, like, okay, y'all here, here's, we got to help these restaurants and we got to teach them like things they should, they can show to let their customers know, okay, we're, we're still here. We're not shut down. And now you can get our fabulous food um, to go. And then some of the chefs in our area were preparing meal kits to where mm -hmm. the chef would go basically shopping, you know, so they would be pulling from their local farm sources and then creating a, a meal kit and then selling that. And then mm -hmm. the customer would buy that and then they would prepare it. So, um, you know, so that, that was, that, yeah. So it, it was interesting to see how, how businesses were, um, were, you know, the word pivoting, everyone was pivoting, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Cause even that environment, you're there to shoot food, but there's a story there too. So someone who's into documentary, working with people, photography, exactly. now you're putting all the pieces together. So that's exactly. a great opportunity. Great point. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of, so those of you who do editorial style shooting, you do documentary style shooting, restaurants and some food brands love that. So food brands who are creating a product where they're locally sourced and they want to feature the farm. Imagine getting a story for that brand where you go to the farm and you're photographing uh, the farmers there and the workers there and creating all these beautiful images. Landscape shooters, guess what? You have a lot of food clients that you can get. There are so many ways that I can translate what you guys shoot into food. <laughs> yes, I've seen it. You know? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. You know, landscape photographers, I, I know from my experience, they're always looking for ways to add more value. You yes, know, it's such exactly. a peculiar niche. You know, they go out there because they, they enjoy the outdoors. So they're um, the first thing they want to do is not make money, but just have people appreciate their their work. So oh, then, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Add a tree of broccoli, add a broccoli forest to your landscape. Yeah. <laughs> You know, exactly. Or a exactly. Or even... cabin house or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. Now your session coming up in January, January twenty seventh, mm -hmm. from ten a.m. to one p.m. is called Beyond the Plates, the yes. Art of Business and Food Photography. Um, you mentioned it slightly, but what can our attendees expect? to take away when they go to your, your pre-con session? So when they leave the workshop, they're going to have an understanding and hopefully be really excited about um, the idea of doing some research for the types of companies in their area that could be a potential client for them for, for shooting food. And, and then in the sort of demo part of the workshop, um, I'm going to really break down the process in which you do a food shoot, what has to happen first and what things happen in which order. Um, there's, I, I'm, a, I'm a really good producer. I'm very organized and um, I actually enjoy sort of the production part of my job. Some photographers aren't and that's okay. And if you're not, you can just work with a producer on your jobs. Um, but so I'll break down sort of what needs to happen first before you even walk into the door so that you get to the job fully prepared. You know where you're gonna shoot. None of this, like, we're gonna hire you for 10 shots, come on in. No, we need some structure to the day. We have to break down what we're actually photographing so that we can make sure we can actually accommodate our shot list in that time frame. 
And so that takes a lot of client education. So I'll be I'll be talking about that as well, because so many times, if again, if you're not working with an ad agency or design firm and you're working with client direct and they've never hired a food shooter before, they have no clue. How would they? You know, it's a weird thing what we do <laughs> in this little food world. They don't know what a shot list is. They don't they don't know. You know, they think they're just going to hire you for the day. You're going to come in and just like shoot thousands of images and they're just going to pick some. That is not how we do this job at all. We have to have a structure, have things planned. So we are prepared for what we're going to be photographing so that it can look fantastic. And so that's sort of like the client education part is really crucial when you're working with client direct clients. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You do not want the client directing you. No. Um, to shoot. Because <laughs> that can no, And that's the thing. And, and a lot of junior shooters who haven't worked with a lot of clients the client can have a tendency to steamroll you. And so uh, I really, really, in my programs, try to teach how to put your foot down. This is your photo shoot. And the client is the client. That's it. You are running the photo shoot, not the client. Some That's clients right. need to be reminded of that. Very nicely, of course, you know, we're not going to be offensive, but in our brain, we're thinking one thing. <laughs> yes. uh, but we might be saying it, you know, a lot nicer. So sort of like, yeah, we have a plan in place. This is what our day is going to be. And if the client wants to change things, there's a cost to that. That's and right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they start walking with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when I, uh, when I do the demo, I'm going to be shooting tethered. So I'm going to be shooting into the computer and I'll be talking about that. And whenever I'm doing a food shoot, even a restaurant job, I'm shooting tethered and I'm shocked at every time I'm working with a restaurant for the first time, they've never seen a photographer shooting tethered. So that means they have no idea what the images are going to look like. And so with, with the way I run my business, I guarantee there will never be a reshoot. I have not reshot a single job in my entire career, except when the client changed the recipe and what I shot is now no longer what the product looks like. And so they hire me for a reshoot. So that's different versus you take photos and then they look at the photos and they don't like anything after the job is done. That's unacceptable. I don't work that way. So everyone's going to know exactly what we're shooting. They're going to know exactly what it looks like and they're going to sign off on it right there. No reshoots. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Get that one out of <laughs> the way and move on to the next shoot. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Well, I think we got a, a question in the comments. Let's see what our audience um, wants to know. Let's see what we got here. Let's see here. Let's see. What are some transferable skills of food photographer, of a food photographer? Transferable skills. So really look at food as a product. So when you're when you are working on a, a food shoot, it's very similar to product photography. So um, when I sort of explain it like that, I think it takes the fear out of like, geez, I don't know how to shoot food, you know? <laughs> so um, so it's, it's one of those skills that uh, really can help you photograph a lot of different things, not, not just food. So, um, and again, you know, I started down the product photography realm first so the progression into shooting food was i mean so easy it was it was so simple the lighting was very similar and um so that translation was really really easy to happen and a lot of you you already have a lot of the equipment that you can use um if you have a softbox perfect mm -hmm. you know um, the demo i'm going to be using one light and a full card that's it easy you don't have to no, none of this three or four lights or anything like that. We're working with a small set also, which makes it a lot easier, um, you know, versus um, some of you who photograph weddings, for example, and you have to photograph a whole bridal party. This is so much easier than that. <laughs> right? Yes. Awesome. And the clients yeah. can be a lot easier to work with, you know, I think, versus, you know, weddings can get kind of touch and go. Yes. I know, I know, I know. I I, uh, I really admire wedding shooters. And I photographed one wedding and I was supposed to be assisting on the wedding. 
And the photographer was a famous photographer in the air. I won't, I won't say who it was, but this is in days of film where people minimum, the wedding fees were like $15,000, right? That's just for hardly anything. He double booked himself and he took off and let me alone to photograph the entire reception. And I'd never done it before. And he knew that. Oh. And yeah. So I was, I was so stressed and again, days of film, right? So you don't really know what you have till it's in the can and you process it. So it was, it was in August, it was 95 degrees and the reception was outside. And it was like, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> and I thought that, that thing I shot like 35 years ago, I swear to God. <laughs> you never forget the trauma. You never forget it. Man, that <laughs> seriously, it was, it was, yeah, it was just, it was a total nightmare. <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't ever. And the, 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 um, the bride's mom was just freaking out. And, you know, she was like, where's the main photographer? Where's, where's this guy? Where's this guy? And I like, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be straight with you. He's at another wedding. Oh. <laughs> like I, I didn't know what like you know. I was, she's yelling at me and screaming at me, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" It was it was absolutely horrible. So, yeah. wedding wedding shooters, I feel for you. I love you, and <laughs> yes, we commend them. Yeah, exactly, we exactly. <laughs> for those of you that do that well, I just it's 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 a it's an incredibly important type of photography that I I think a lot of people don't realize. Uh, the value in that, you know, it's crucial. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think we got time for one more question. Let's take a look here. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Well, someone wants to know what's your favorite dish to shoot? Any dessert will do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so many things. Honestly, I love photographing salads because they tend to be really bright and colorful and that is living food right it's stuff that was just picked from the farm um and just plated quickly and you got to eat it it's very perishable and um there's so many ways to make a beautiful salad uh i i do love i do i do get into that and of course yeah if there's an amazing stunning dessert that just makes its own photo practically all you got to do is light it beautifully and then um you know it'll it'll just it, it's weird it's like you're as the food photographer when you're working with a chef who really knows how to plate you are capturing what their intention is on the plate mm. what their the integrity of that dish what they're trying to do it's not about you as the photographer creating a whole like piece of art. It's, it's, it's really like documenting this gorgeous thing as beautifully as you can so that that image will give their customer a sense of when they go into that restaurant, what are, what is that food experience going to be like for them? And so, um, so that's where I don't get, I don't like, bring crazy effects in or anything like that. It's all about that food. It's just, it's just going to be perfect. And, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point too. Cause you're, you're interpreting work from another artist. That's on exactly. The and you know what? I've interviewed a lot of chefs, not interview, but I talk to them about what are their concerns. If they haven't worked with a food shooter before, I want to make sure they're comfortable. And every single time, they say that they want their their integrity their the reason why they created that dish they want that to come through on uh, on the plate and they want it to come through on the photo and mm -hmm. so i'll ask them about the dish and what's important what's like so important to you about this dish why where did it come from what made you create this recipe and so then that will help me with my focus feature um certain things. I, I really love shooting selected focus, shallow depth of field with um, a close up of a food shot. And if the chef gives me information about what's really important, even if it's like a portion of the garnish on the dish was from a farm just 30 minutes away, you know, and they're micro herbs and they're, they're 
just grown for that restaurant. Guess we're going to photograph that and make sure that's in focus on that dish, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's definitely a collaboration um, with that artist to yeah. see what's, what's important, what we need to feature here. And, um, and hopefully then that they will love the image just as much as we do. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Now let's see. Final question. Okay. Let's see here. I'm going to pick one here. I like this question. Do you like using constant lighting or prefer flash with food photography? Oh, okay. So it depends on where we are and the environment. So let's say that, um, and I'm going to keep speaking about restaurants because that is one of the most approachable, like easiest food clients to get into photographing. So if I were to go to a restaurant and the interior of that restaurant is stunning and beautiful, I'm going to be doing a combination of lighting where I'm going to be using both. So I'll have flash possibly for the food so I can make sure the food is lit nicely and then use an ambient burn, um, you know, let, let the environment. Uh, so I'll, I'll have a flash go off, but then I'll have the shutter speed drag. So the shutter speed will be longer so you can see the environment and, and see how that dish um, looks in that space. So I love doing mixed lighting like that. I tend to do mixed lighting a lot with my food photography when it's a restaurant like that. Um, if it's a space that's maybe more industrial and it's not really, or maybe, you know, you're working for like a burger bar or something like that. And it's, it's really just about the food then sometimes I might just like, you know, they want to shoot it on white, on a white background so they can knock it out and then just, it just has some really nice lighting on the burger that way, then that will be 100% strobe. But I'm basically incorporating strobe quite often. Um, if you are photographing something that can melt, sandwiches, things settle. So if you are using a constant light source, you could potentially get blur in your food because it, it's moving all the time, very slowly. Salads are the, the worst for basically weighing down, especially if you put dressing on it. So, um, so that's why strobe's kind of important for that. Mm -hmm. And we'll be using strobe uh, uh, for the demo. It's gonna be, I believe it's gonna be a Westcott mono light, really nice light from Westcott, like small, portable, really easy to bring into the um to the restaurant awesome yeah awesome well thank you for sharing that guys don't miss it it's going to happen january 27th from 10 a.m to 1 p.m christina's program is called beyond the plate the art of business and food photography don't miss it it's an excellent skill to have it's going to add more value to your services and it's just going to be fun yeah. just to be in that program and you know i gotta throw in there the workshop's only 99 dollars. i think you That's guys it. my my in-person workshops start at 850 a day hmm. a little food for thought there <laughs> <laughs> so it's a smoking deal like for 99 bucks you can just you know, like you know add this to your your education packet that you're going to be getting there at the pre-con no, right. right. no brainer no brainer <laughs> book your room please too Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have for today. You know, Christina, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Everyone, thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing everyone at Imaging USA. And if you have any questions for Christina, you can reach her at christinapeters.com. If you want to chat with her and socialize and blog with her, you can reach her at foodphotographyblog.com. Mm -hmm. All right. So everyone, thank you for your time. Have oh, a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. And All we'll right, see y'all. Bye. See you at imaging. <laughs> see you at imaging. <laughs>